Now, whose name are you desperately we're, trying we're, to We're trying to search for Chris's question of who's that dude from this the, movie. That the doctor from... guy. Isn't it, isn't it doctor something? The dude who's like, oh, my friend doesn't like you. And then his friend gets his fucking arm cut off, like, immediately. Oh, that guy. I don't know his name. Isn't no, one of I them a just... doctor? I don't know what kind of medical school they went to, but I feel like one of them is a doctor. They were in Rogue One as well. Systems. All right. Uh, the the uh, the Aqualish. His name was Ponda Baba. <laughs> and his his companion was Doctor Cornelius e- Evazon. Evazon. How did you know he was a doctor? No, that's all I knew was that he's a doctor. I thought and... it said doctor, but I wasn't sure, so I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> but yeah, Ponda Baba's one of my favorites, just because his name is fun as hell to say. What brought this to mind, Chris? You know, stuff. <laughs> Roll the intro! <laughs> Welcome to Star Wars Every Week Forever, the podcast in which we watch one Star Wars movie every week forever. This week, I got a little bit of a new hope. Ben, how's your watch? (laughs) Okay, I gotta say this ahead of time. I gotta say this ahead of time. For some reason, we, us, have decided to put video on the Skype call for this, and Chris is just rapidly switching between background filters. (laughs) Uh, my watch was all right. I I this is my favorite movie. I enjoyed this watch. I'm I'm starting to notice. Well, starting I'm, it's getting to the point where I don't even pay attention to what's supposed to be paid attention to in these movies. <laughs> I am just scanning the background for the dumbest shit I could find. <laughs> That's fair. I I found a similar experience. I. Uh, well, actually, Chris, how's your watch? My watch was good. It was, uh, this movie's always, uh, a welcome return to form. Yeah. If nothing else, it's, uh, reliably good, I guess. That's fair. And also, I, I've really just gotten to a point where I just pay attention to the weirdest shit, like Dr. Uh, what's his butts. What's his doctor? What's his? Butt? I just told you his name, Doctor Cornelius Ivazon. Yeah, that one. Listen, yeah, that one. what? Sure. What medical training did and, this guy really and have? And Ponda Baba and Trinto Duaba. What? What <laughs> medical training did this guy really have, though? Like, I, I want to know. Here we go. Time for the deep dive. He Are we does, going canon or legends? He does What's feel his, like uh... he's some kind of like illegal scientist and or street doctor. My watch was my watch. Um, I had a few drinks last night, and I decided around 11.30, why should I go to bed when I can keep drinking Saw and watch that. A New Hope? I don't know what the uh, the impetus of that decision was, but how'd that go? It was a good watch. Everything was really funny to me. It, it greatly improved the watch, actually. I don't have a lot of notes because of it, but it greatly improved the watch. There was way too much information about this character. It was a promising surgeon who operated cosmetic sur- a cosmetic surgery clinic uh, on Ponzora, a small settlement located in the remote desert of Abara Ab 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 Afar. It's really Ab- fun to watch you struggle. <laughs> Listen. This was a good idea doing video chat so we can watch the trail of like the thought process leave each other's heads. <laughs> I most of my watch was just laughing at things I have never laughed at in my entire life watching the movies. The Obi Wan squeal. <laughs> got such a fucking laugh out of me this time, and I don't know why. <laughs> I, so when I said I've been noticing the dumbest little shit in the background, I mean that, like, in the cantina when the stormtroopers are coming over to, to Han and Chewie, in the background is a uh, a, a Changer fan, one of those bat-looking guys who are, like, real short. Mm-hmm. 
and the 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 person in this costume is trying to make it look like they're drinking, but like they're holding up the cup with their two hands and just like hitting their <laughs> chin with it. And it was like I, the I, funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. I remember that individual as well. <laughs> just saw that and I was like, oh, that just made my day. That just made me <laughs> so happy for some reason. <laughs> The other thing I got a big laugh out, out of was the Tuscan loop. So, since I'm probably not going to use this video, uh, Chris just found a way to make his background the cantina on a New Hope. Fuck so, yeah. please enjoy these visual gags you will never see. <laughs> this is just I've, for us, baby. Just I've for us. I always wanted to see Chris sitting in the most Isley cantina smoking a vape pen. I, I also appreciate, so we're doing video, and um, you can always hear sometimes that, I always assumed Chris was just taking, like, a small drink of water or something. No, it's him aggressively vaping. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Listen, sometimes you have to watch Star Wars every week, and then you have to start aggressively vaping. <laughs> The other thing I got a big laugh out of was the Tuscan loop, which is the Tuscan Raider going, uh, oh, yeah. bringing up his arms and then just aggressively going up and down. But it's a repeated GIF essentially. It's like of, one of those boomerang yeah. things. Yeah. It's George yeah. Lucas was ahead of his time. Ahead of his time, he made a GIF. He made a he made a GIF or a, he made like an Instagram boomerang video. George Lucas invented GIFs. Stop. <laughs> The other thing I got a pretty decent laugh out of, I don't think I've said this on the podcast yet, but originally C-3PO's voice was supposed to be like a, a car salesman, like a super shady car salesman. Like, George Lucas was looking really, really hard to find uh, someone who sounded shady and was going to rip you off. And I started thinking about this while 3PO was trying to convince Uncle Owen to buy him. Because it was really, really funny to me to imagine that voice in that scenario. <laughs> just like, just, I, just like this, this trying to rip you off, like, salesman pitch of someone buying something they absolutely do not need was deeply funny to me, this watch, even though it only happened in my head. It's just 3PO fucking standing over in line like, hey, you looking to buy a couple droids? Hey, get over here. We'll... <laughs> <laughs> we got just what you need right over here. Hell, stop on over. So if that was George Lucas's like original idea, how did he settle on because Anthony Daniels? Anthony yeah. Daniels was always in the suit, and he was just supposed to be in the suit. He wasn't supposed to be the actual Oh, voice. George Lucas's classic. Let's <laughs> just put a guy in a suit and then say fuck you yeah and then he had a ton of people i need to look it up um but somebody specifically like he did like 10 or 12 voices to try to fill in 3po and then one famous guy i can't remember his name I will, i'll see if i can find him in my notes but one famous guy came in and he's like you know the guy in the suit's voice works really well for for you i don't know why you just don't use him and then george kind of threw up his arm and said all right 3po is british it's a really funny thing to yell in defeat. Fine, he's British. Fine, Fine he's British. <laughs> this is the same guy that said part of the part of the fun of C3PO is he has no soul, so I'm sure he was very broken up about I feel that. that. <laughs> I feel like we all can feel that on a deeply personal level. Come on down to I'm selling me land. I'm selling me specifically. Please buy me. My sidekick is a piece of shit. Please buy me. I'm begging you to buy me. I could do whatever the hell you need, but specifically, Uncle Owen, please buy me. I also love how uh, so C-3PO like convinces Luke after uh, forgot his name. Fuck. Uh, R4. <laughs> uh, the the R4 unit after it like kills itself. Uh, C-3PO's like, hey, uh, you should get that one. He's fantastic. And then literally the next day, Luke goes, that droid's going to get me in trouble. And C-3PO goes, oh, 
he excels at that, sir. And I'm just like, see, Therapy, you're really a piece of shit, aren't you? <laughs> like, transparently. It's fine, it's fine. We've pegged every other character in Star Wars as a piece of shit. It's 3PO's time, baby! It's, it's 3PO's, 3PO's time! time to shine. I want to know, there's a droid in that scene that's just this black domed droid. And I want to know what, like, this massive black really domed tall? droid... No, 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 no. It's like a full... Oh, circular, it's like, um, dro- like super drone-like droid, just just a mushroom top droid, and I want to know what the fuck that does because I can't think of a single function on a desert planet that that thing would do. Like like there's some ridiculous designs because they just had to put together a bunch of shit, but that one specifically I can't figure out what it would do. As as. Ben furiously, I see him looking through Wikipedia Shut trying up. to figure it out. Because <laughs> I know there's that, like, that really tall black one with all the weird, like, shapes. Not that one. Not that I, one. I know, but I know that one is a an R1 unit. Sure. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Ranking the 59 best droids in the Star Wars universe. What, Chris? I see you. I see your gears. No, turn. no. No, don't. No, no. no. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, just looking at the fucking, <laughs> the fucking birthdays for today. <laughs> fucking D.B. Weiss's no, birthday. No, you, you no birthdays. We're not doing birthdays. This is not radio jockeying. <laughs> Are we that desperate for just time? Just a, a shout out to uh, <laughs> David, David Bernie, who... Uh, Voiced Anakin Skywalker in the final episode of the Return of the Jedi video uh, radio drama. He also played the Romulan Senator Latant in the Star Trek Deep Space Nine episode Tears of the Prophets. Yeah, I know. Now I'm referencing Star Trek, you motherfucker. <laughs> it's me this time. <laughs> oh, how the turntables. Chris. Chris aggressively pointing his vape at me while he says that. <laughs> I can see you. You ain't getting away from me this time. <laughs> I'm so mad I can't find this droid. It's not it's not necessary. I will find the droids I'm looking for. Dear God. Happy birthday to Andrew Kreisberg, writer of a one single episode of Star Wars the Clone Wars TV series. Alright, I need to abandon the search because I gotta I gotta get Chris back on the rails real fucking quick. Show me that AO3. Hi, welcome to my new segment, Show Me That AO3. Um, oh, God. Uh, you you sing yourself into a new bit. I did sing myself into a new bit. I did. Um, so, neither of you can look this up because you we're going to play a little game right now. That's all right. I'm looking up droids. So, Show Me That AO3 is a new game that we play in conjunction with a uh, friend of the show. <laughs> At SWAO3 tags, uh, who goes through the glorious, glorious, glorious uh, profit like job of going to Archive of Our Own, the number one fan fiction site on the web, and going through the tags <gasps> specifically to find the weirdest tags that they can. Uh, if you don't know, Archive of, uh, Archive of Our Own does, has a tagging system, but it also allows you to just put in whatever bullshit you want. So there's a ton of weird tags that, out of context, make absolutely no sense on the website. And I have developed a game around it. Uh, so I am going to give the both of you... Uh, we're going to do this twice, and then if we the bit comes back, we'll do the bit again. I'm going to give you five tags. It strikes back. One of them is false. One of them oh, no. is fake. One of oh, them is fake. No. And the other four are real. It's four truths and a lie. It's four truths and a lie. Oh, I already hate this. I'm going to do two of these this time. So it'll be ten tags all together. Two of them are fake. And we'll divide them up by five. So here is oh, no. the tags for today. Number one. Dooku is the Emily Gilmore of the Star Wars universe. That's the Gilmore Girls reference, if you don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, that was going to be my follow-up question, because... Number two. Obi-Wan is not actually a hooker. Number three. 
Kyle Ron doesn't know how to feelings. Number four, Jawas make great therapists, Ben. Number five, Canon is a sandbox and I am Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> so one of these is fake. One of these is absolutely I, I hate not. that you wrote one of these. <laughs> I had to get creative, I'll tell you that. I really hate that you wrote one of these, that you're responsible <laughs> for one of these. Uh, so they are Dooku is the Emily Gilmore of the Star Wars universe. Obi-Wan is not actually a hooker. Kyle Ron doesn't know how to feelings. Kyle Jawas Ron. make great therapists, Ben. And Canon is a sandbox, and I am Anakin Skywalker. One of these is false, which? Take a guess. Wait, does the one say... Does the one actually say Ben? Yes. What the fuck? I mean, Ben Kenobi. Uh, yeah. So it, like, can't, it can't be that I, one. because that was I thought too you were addressing to me for a second, and it, it threw me for yes, a fucking Yes, Ben, move. Jawas make great therapists. I know, I thought you were saying Jawas make great therapists, and then you just say Ben, and I was like, what? Wait, huh? <laughs> I'm taking this as an absolute win. That's, that's difficult. What was the last one? Canon is a sandbox, and I am Anakin Skywalker. I really want you to have written that one. <laughs> is that your guess? I don't know. Should it be my guess? It's your guess. Ben, what's your guess? Uh, I'm going to guess the, the first one, the Gilmore Girls reference. Uh, the one that I wrote is Jawas Make Great Therapists, Ben. Uh, oh, see, I thought it would be too obvious. Um, I saw someone else use Ben, and I was very confused, and then in another tag, and then I was like, well, I can just throw that in there. <laughs> the second one I'll do today, and then if we bring back this bit, I'll only do one. It's coming back. <laughs> We're oh, I, I want this to continue forever. <laughs> uh, all right, so here's another five. Desert children and their continued fascination with plants. That's number one. Number two, pining so metaphysical you can plant a tree with it. I swear to God, if there's a fucking theme with this. <laughs> number three, I wear my grandma's clothes and I look incredible. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> number four. Fellas, is it gay to stare longingly at your commanding officer's jawline? <laughs> Chris just laughed so hard he put up his mic. <laughs> Number five. Update schedule is determined by relative position of the closest pigeon to my left shoe. <laughs> Which is the greatest sentence ever described by man. Would you like me to repeat that? Yes, please. I need... Up yeah. Update schedule is determined by relative position of the closest pigeon to my left shoe. I need the rest of them, too. I'm, I'm totally... Okay, I'll start from the beginning. Number one. What the fuck? Desert children and their continued <laughs> fascination with plants. Number two. Pining so metaphysical you could plant a tree with it. Number three, I wear my grandma's clothes and I look incredible. <laughs> Number four, fellas, is it gay to stare longingly at your commander, commanding officer's jaw? <laughs> Chris made me laugh on that one. Five, update schedule is determined by relative position of the closest pigeon to my left shoe. One of these is false. It's... It's it's the second one, pining. Okay. What's your guess, Chris? I'm going to go with the commanding officer just because it's my favorite. <laughs> ben is correct. I did indeed make pining so metaphysical you could plant a tree with it. I am the master commander. This second one has such an incredible lineup. I want to know so badly why there is a Star Wars tag that just says, I wear my grandma's clothes and I look incredible. I need to know why that's a thing. <laughs> well, Josh, I feel like there's an easy way for you to figure this out. No, there is you not. You just have to go down the rabbit hole of that tag. 
So that was Show Me That AO3. Uh, you can follow uh, the wonderful people that sort through these things at SWAO3 tags. And thank you to them so much for allowing us to do this bit. That's all I've got. Apparently, that one's a hit, so it will return. Update schedule is determined by relative pigeon of the re relative position of the closest pigeon to my left shoe. It's See, just... the thing was, two of these you were cracking up way too much on, so I <laughs> yeah. knew that couldn't be either of them. I mean, the, the grandma one and that last one I knew, but they are fantastic. Um, it has been determined that I will laugh at my own jokes, so. Yeah. So here we are. So what was the droid you found, Ben? Oh, that droid is an LINV8K. Okay. Uh, it's it is an LIN demolitional tech autonomous mine layer. So they were. S Hold on. <laughs> well, that's just it's some a mining sci-fi techno it's babble a bullshit. Droid. It's, it's, it's a mining, mining droid. Yeah, it's made the for way mining, you said it, it but sounded, it says mine layer. The way you said it, it sounded like a droid that makes mines. And That's I was about to say, like. why are they selling these to farmers? <laughs> Damn Tuscans. <laughs> I'm sick of it. Did you think the racism left the house when the old man died? No. Coming in here and taking oh. our wives. <laughs> listen, oh, listen, I, listen. I, I won't stand for it. The droid went unnamed until 1995. Y'all, I ran through my notes. I ran through all my notes. It was just three so, big laughs. Here's so. the thing that I, I would like to talk about that I thought about during this watch. Okay. So... Um, Doctor uh, with the face. Um, <laughs> the, the article's literally in the Discord, Chris. Uh, what is that? Cornelius Evazan. Yeah, that that guy. That guy. Can you imagine? Like, can we just imagine for a moment, like a Marvel's What If scenario, where Luke Skywalker just gets killed in this bar brawl what's the rest of this movie it's uh, old man and two droids try to find a ride to stop an intergalactic empire <laughs> i mean i think at that point i think if you kill the main character you become the main character so i think we just follow doctor kind of a pig face i think that's no, I don't think that's how that works. I think I think that's the rest of the movie. I think it's just like, all right, Maybe this is we're now. Not, we're not doing Riddick Law. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't Ooh. think we're doing Riddick Law on this. Can I get Vin Diesel as the lead in a Star Wars movie, please? Oh my god. Yes, please. Okay. More interestingly. And along the lines of what we've been trying to do, who would you replace in this movie? What actor would you replace oh. with modern day Vin Diesel? Or better yet, 2004 Vin Diesel. Who would you recast as Vin Diesel? Okay. Oh, I was I was made for this game. Hear me out. There's so many good choices. He hear me out. Chewbacca. But like, it's just Vin Diesel, not the suit. But he still makes Chewbacca noises. I feel Dude, like that that's was, a cop out. Though. That, was, that was my first thought. Can I can I counter offer? <laughs> counter yes, offer. R two D two. Beep beep. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess you're too small to go running away on me. Beep. <laughs> Squeak. <laughs> wow. Oh God, no, Does Vin Diesel have a cameo? That, that Does, means we get Vin Diesel in the prequels, too. As we get Diesel. Vin Diesel in all the movies now. I'm Vin Diesel, sure. Vin Diesel is in every single Star Wars movie. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. So now we have Vin Diesel just, like, sitting behind the cockpit of the X-Wing as they're playing. Vin 2D2. Vin 
Diesel's just sitting there in the back of the X-Wing, just in the vacuum of space within the X-Wing. <laughs> Oh, R2, God. my stabilizer's out. You need to fix it. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me reach <laughs> over and, like... It. He just talks like a normal person. He's like, oh, shit, shit. You realize I can't breathe out here, right? Fuck, shit. Okay, let me just... Uh, this thing is a mess. Why didn't you put do a fucking survey on this thing before you took it into <laughs> fucking space to take out the goddamn Death Star? All right, R2, all right. Vin Diesel in the back of Anakin, Sky young Anakin Skywalker's Naboo starfighter, just fucking screaming at him, just like, "Why are you flying the ship? I can oh only God. protect you so much." Do we Listen. get Vin Diesel in the Clone Wars? <laughs> Give the Fast and Furious franchise like two more movies, and we'll get that. <laughs> well, we've made the better Star Wars movies. Vin Two D Two makes the better Star Wars movies. And then you get, like, one movie where Vin Diesel is so depressed that Mark Hamill isn't around that he's just out of the action. <laughs> Does that make that movie the Tokyo Drift of Star Wars movies? <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, Rise of Skywalker is the Tokyo Drift of Star Wars movies. <laughs> okay, so... Actually, maybe... Uh... Hold on. Maybe... Maybe Force Awakens is Tokyo Drift, because Tokyo Drift is kind of just the first Fast and Furious movie, but faster. That that was my thought, yes. <laughs> then again, that does describe Rise of Skywalker very well. So, hold on, I want to piggyback off of this game. Okay. And just take Vin Diesel out of the equation. Okay. If you could, your ideal world, your perfect fan casting, you get to replace one actor or actress in the Star Wars franchise with a different actor or actress. Padme Amidala is Fran. No. Man, no. Sure? no. No. <laughs> Illegal. I bring you this question Illegal. and you against the didn't law. have to think. That was immediate. <laughs> I, Why my was that in already, Josh? Just, <laughs> my, brain, my brain before you even started the sentence was just going... Ridiculous okay. actor, ridiculous actor, ridiculous actor. And I okay. kept getting Danny DeVito, and I'm like, no, Danny DeVito is already Yoda. Okay, I've got, I've got two. And Dresser. <laughs> I've got two. Christopher Walken as Ben Kenobi. Okay. <laughs> counterpoint, counterpoint, counterpoint. Christopher Walken as Count Dooku. Counterpoint, Christopher Walken as Palpatine. <laughs> Counterpoint, Christopher Walken is every character. No, uh, I am the Senate. <laughs> I uh, am the Senate. No, that's Kirk. That's Kirk. Uh, that We've already Kirk. done Kirk Palpatine. Uh, you, like, slipped briefly into Obama there for a second. I was really worried just to take it away. Well, I, uh, so I, I am the Senate. <laughs> when, when me and my one friend, who I won't name this episode for once, this went episode. to Disney... Uh, we were joking a lot because th I found this video. It was a uh, Kermit as Emperor Palpatine, and we joked that every other character was just Obama. <laughs> I forgot about this bit. So this was a legitimate time... bit that they talked about for a long time that Palpatine was Kermit, and then the every problem. other character in Star Wars was just Barack Obama. <laughs> So, like, we were quoting scenes at each other in our Barack Obama voices just randomly throughout the course of the week at Disney, and it was the funniest shit. I don't... I wish I knew where this bit came from. It's, because, it's uh, over, Obama. I have the, uh, the high ground. You, uh, underestimate my power. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see Chris's disappointment in me. No, uh, I am your father. I want to do a lot of Kylo Ren Obama. Just like, uh, I don't want to do this right now. Yeah, um, me neither. Oh my god, the Ray and Kylo Ren scenes where it's just two Obamas. Yeah, like every <laughs> character, like, couldn't you, uh, put a shirt on or something? <laughs> Let me tell you, when uh, next time we meet, you will uh, 
you will take my hand. <laughs> you will. You will take my oh, hand. Oh my god. Oh my god, and then Kermit is Palpatine in The Rise of Skywalker. As a, I am fallen, so too shall fall the last Obama. <laughs> Oh, I was okay until that fucking Kermit. <laughs> I was hanging in there. Um, part two of my dream casting is Nicolas Cage as Luke Skywalker. Counterpoint, Nicolas Cage as Anakin Skywalker. No! no! Obama, we have to find the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I think a crucial thing that we are fucking up with this is if they don't become themselves, they still are playing that character. We're only picking actors who can't be anything but themselves. (laughs) Ben literally said Obama. I have the hot (laughs) ground. Counterpoint. Everyone's just named Obama, but none of them talk like Obama. Just every character except Palpatine is named Obama. <laughs> this is bad. I this was is really bad. On, this is I was hired on the moons of Bogdan and... by a man named Obama. <laughs> <laughs> this is a terrible bit. <laughs> I'm just an Obama trying to make his way in the universe. <laughs> Jesus. Why Christ. Was... The situation you've just brought up makes it sound like Obama has never said the word man. He has always replaced the word man with Obama, Ben. <laughs> I, I, that, it just popped in my head, all right? Uh, let me tell you. Uh, I do this... <laughs> I do this for all Obama kind. God bless I mean, America. But you have everybody, and I mean everybody, named Obama. <laughs> Except for Sheev Palpatine. <laughs> this is, I regret this. This is my, this, this is a, a thing of my doing. <laughs> Don't take credit away from me. This was a group effort. I had an answer for my own question. I forgot it now. It's gone. <laughs> I need you to find it. I, would I don't really hope. remember what it was at this point. We still doing Obama impressions? <laughs> no, I think that bit's done. I would prefer if that bit's done. Uh, do or do not? There, uh, there is no try. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! What have we done? R two D two. Beep. Uh. Beep. Bop. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. R two D two is still. Let me be very clear. <laughs> Let me be very clear. Boop. Beep bop. Wow. Wow. No, wait, wait, wait. What's his name? Fuck. Oh, God. oh my God. Josh wants some Jawa juice. Uh, R2-D2 is Owen Wilson. Wow. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> okay. <laughs> R2-D2 entering the hallway in the Revenge of the Sith just going, wow! <laughs> and hitting the wall. <laughs> this is the worst! <laughs> okay. This is non-canon. I will say this ahead of time. This is totally canon. No, no, this is uh, downtime. Darth. We won't be able to get the actor we want, so we have to have a replacement for Darth Vader. Who is the voice go? Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, uh, let me be very clear. Oh, let me be I, clear. Uh, I am your father. Wait, but it's downtime, Darth. So it's gonna be... Mr. Uh, Emperor, would you uh, 
let me be clear. Would you uh happen to have a seen my leg? <laughs> I uh I sure hope you would join me. Um um and 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 that's a terrific point. Uh I cannot eat this food. Uh however uh however, I would appreciate it if you would uh dine with me. Let me be very clear. As your, I would uh, like to. I would like to meet my uh, my daughter's boyfriend. Does your uh, kitchen staff have any uh, stemless uh, pears? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Uh, <laughs> what are we doing? I've uh, I've altered the arrangement. Uh, I pray I do not alter it further. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, wait, so Darth Vader just gets the suit, and he breaks off of the, the restraints, and you just hear, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is the most since the fucking episode where Josh and I went off on a Jerry Seinfeld tirade, where we have fully lost our fucking selves to this bit. What a... 5% of this episode has been Obama impressions. <laughs> What a, what's the deal with the, uh, and let me be very clear, do we Star Wars. Obama Seinfeld? <laughs> Just do an Obama Seinfeld. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> I have, we're sitting here, Ben has a fucking wampa stuffed animal on his head. I do have a Chris wampa has, on my head. Chris has the Tatooine fucking cantina behind him while he aggressively vapes. Over my shoulder is the one a cup of Jawa juice droid. What are we doing? This is our lives now, now mates. We should have been doing this from the beginning. <laughs> this is a terrible idea. A terrible, terrible idea we've done right now. I knew I should not have watched this movie drunk, even though it was a pleasurable experience. If I had points, we would not be talking about fucking... <laughs> Listen, uh, I proposed an innocent game and it where turned... we celebrity fan cast one character in all of Star Wars. I hate you so much. I hate you so much. <laughs> Did it work? For the audience at home. Oh, yes, it worked. I, uh, ben, I, I ben, has put up, ben has put up a pod race background on his video. <laughs> this and is this the is... most brilliant. Pod race mention in it's the getting history so, of it's our It's getting podcast. better. It's evolving. I'm just Alpatine. over, here, I'm just I, over I was... here having a drink with my buddies, uh, shovel face and one arm and... <laughs> and some doctor guy. Some doctor guy. He's a cosmetic surgeon, but his face is still all fucked up. Ironic. Figured he can out. Save on others from fucked up faces. What's, but what's I the deal with that guy's face? Both of you just had perfect lines, but the lines were lessened because you talked over yourselves. Ben saying he could save other people from fucked up faces, but not himself. And Chris going, what's the deal? <laughs> fucked wait, up faces. This is a mistake. This is glorious. This fucking podcast is a mistake. <laughs> It's a very enjoyable mistake, but it's absolutely a mistake. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my god. This is our lives. I don't okay. know if I mentioned this nine weeks ago. But... That was the best lead-in you've done to the books yet. Well but done. These fucking books. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> there's... So I don't know if I mentioned this. Please tell me if I did. There's a whole subplot where Leia tries to escape from the Death Star on her own, and she, like, sees a shuttle, and she knocks out her two guards and, like, makes a break for the shuttle. And as she gets there, the ramp lowers, and there's Darth Vader standing there. And it's just the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard. Like, he's just like, oh... You thought you could escape, and it's like a like a comic book villain level like 
Yeah, but it's also like Plan. such a dad move. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hilarious. You thought that you could escape the house after 9 p.m. Unacceptable. Really is just like an aggressive dad move. Just like, I'm at the door. I knew you would try to get out. Okay, hold up. Uh, Accountant Vader in the movie. I think Chris would be very in favor of this. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. That's fair. That's fair. You know, we made a lot of jokes, but if there was one um, character that I would put into the movie, it would be Fran Dresser as Padme Amidala, but the second one would be Accountant Vader as actual Vader. I'm I'm beginning to worry. I'm I'm worried because Porkins isn't hitting as hard as it used to. Oh no! And I'm now getting scared. Is anything hitting as hard as it used to, at this point? Other than Ian McDermott, is there a scene that still Pod like race? has an emotional? <laughs> Is there a scene that still has an emotional impact on you every time you watch it at this point? Because I don't think there is for me. Um, Other than laughter. Oh, jeez. Unless it's laughter that specifically the movie wants you to make. I don't know if I've ever laughed at a thing the movie wanted me to. I don't know. They, They Fly Now still makes me laugh so hard. Um, no, yeah, I still do laugh every time Luke smacks Ray's hand with... <laughs> that that does get me. That does still get me. I'm unashamed to say that. Oh, Chris, why would you steal my bit and put Rick McCallum behind you? <laughs> it looks like Chris is, like, a kid sitting on Rick McCallum's lap right now. <laughs> Daddy, like, McCa- Grandpa just, McCaleb, would you please come on our podcast? Just a big fucking Rick McCaleb right in front of him. I have you don't behind come, him, rather. You don't come back vision. to America very often, but Grandpa McCaleb, please be on our podcast. You don't have to come to America for it. You're too busy at your your check farm with your check kids and your check wife. I have a, I have a vision of us finally getting like an advertiser one of these days and you two having to watch me do an ad read with fucking Rick McCaleb just (laughs) I will say and I've said this before on the podcast this movie is so fucking refreshing to watch compared to all of the other movies largely because and I know this is a dumb reason when you think the movie should be over, you look at the timeline on the movie, and we're getting there. Most of the other movies in this saga, you're just like, is it, or we should be like within 30 minutes to the end of the movie, and it's like, no, it's like 45 minutes to 50 minutes, or The Last Jedi, where it's like an hour. If I'm thinking, okay, we should be towards the end of this, and I click on the timeline to this, to this movie, it, it's exactly where I would expect it to be. It's so... I can't believe I ever made the complaint that this the beginning of this movie was slow because it's almost it's perfectly paced and I was wrong. Because as soon as you're like, all right, this is starting this is getting long, you're almost at the end. It's usually like right at the end of Death Star, I'm like, all right, I've had about enough of this. The, so. uh, the issue I have with the pacing in this movie is I feel like the end kind of is rushed. Yeah. Like there's yeah. a it's literally a half hour to the end once they leave the Death Star. I mean, for sure. And they they get to the Rebel base, they make a plan, they go up, and they blow it up, and the movie's over. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> You're right. But I appreciate that now, as the person yeah. that has to watch it every week. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's still, like... it's It still holds up. It's still a well-done movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, the ending is definitely a little rushed, but like, it's a good formula. It just it's you know tried and true, and yeah, you know, like you said, I mean, you get to the end and it's like, oh man, we got to be getting close. And yeah, you you know, it's like ten minutes. Okay, uh, we're gonna have to make a rule here sooner or later that no more funny backgrounds because we're on a podcast. <laughs> It is slowing down the podcast, but uh, <laughs> uh jo- Josh is now a, a part of a three-way with Emperor Palpatine and I'm in my favorite generic romance woman. Novel. I'm in generic, my favorite romance novel. Generic uh, romance novel cover lady. <laughs> All our friends are here. All Palpatine, our friends are here. Romance cover lady. <laughs> Rick McCallum. <laughs> I miss Rick McCallum as a bit. I really do. I don't have a excuse to bring up Rick McCallum anymore and it makes me sad. Would you say that you miss him a bit? <laughs> we haven't done like a we did a check in last episode, but we were so happy last episode. I think that's the happiest we've been in a really <laughs> long time. <laughs> last episode was like I think I said it it's like the most therapeutic episode yeah. we've had since yeah, I, don't, the I, don't, I don't know. There's a uh... There's been parts of this episode where I've been very happy. <laughs> and this most of good... them involved Ben doing an impression. <laughs> I'm, I'm good with this episode. I'm, I'm happy with this episode thus far. Like, we're all, like, it feels like we have all agreed that we hate watching these movies, except Revenge of the Sith last episode. But every time we get to sit down and goof off, and talk about these movies, talk about these movies um, with big quotation marks around it because we very rarely do. Uh, and our fans have accepted that. Um, I do love the idea of someone watching or, you know, listening to last week's episode and being like, wow, that was all, there was a lot of actual Star Wars talk. And, and then this episode, we do Obama impressions for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Josh. Yeah, it is it is a real dichotomy, isn't it? Last episode we talked about like not like really great topics, but we found a lot to talk about in regards to the movie. And this episode we talked about the the uh the ranch just a little bit and we just did whatever the fuck else we did. <laughs> we did like half an hour of Obama impressions. <laughs> and then like twenty minutes of of uh uh Archive of Our Own tags. Thank you. Thank you, Archive of Our Own. Out of context, Twitter so much. Friend of the show. Yes, we got you know, explicit permission uh, to reference yes. them as a bit. Yeah, no, yes. that, was, uh, that, was, that was very cool. We, uh, you we know, appreciate we've, it. We've connected a bit on social media and everything and getting to use their stuff for this bit. Yeah, I, I enjoyed so it. They I enjoyed the bit. They specifically We're, said, use them however you see fit. And I'm like, that does not seem like a thing you should tell oh. us. <laughs> We're we in the Discord uh, messaging back and forth. And Josh is like, yeah, I might ask, uh, what was it, AO3 was... Uh, the... At, I will tag, I will aggressively tag this for the rest of my days. At SWAO3 tags, friend of the show. Okay, yeah, so Josh just goes, I'm going to ask AO3 if we could use some of their stuff for a bit, and I just didn't answer, and then later Josh goes, yeah, they gave us the okay, and I'm like, all right, now I need to know, what's AO3? I've been been pushing this for weeks. And Josh explained it to me as, what was it, they they take fan fiction bits out of context? They take fan fiction tags, specifically tags, so like things that you can click on to specifically look through tags, but you can type whatever you want in there. And, you know, okay. they kind of conversate through the tags sometimes. So so Josh tells me that, and I go, oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it really is just, like, my new favorite thing on the internet. Like, they post so often, and it cracks me up every single time. My favorite being, uh, canon is fake except for the parts that I like. <laughs> Uh, and one released today that just says, I make up a lot of things about the Star Wars universe. Just, like, whatever come they can fucking find. <laughs> it's it's really good. It, it's my new favorite thing. It's stuff like that that makes this not as hard as it could be. 
Like there's yeah. other people making other <laughs> things to keep, you know, the Star Wars fandom interesting. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're they're a super fun follow. I've got to check them out. Well, no, I don't want you to actually, because I'm going oh, to be using they gotta your be content. Oh, they got to be surprised. God damn it! Yeah. Why would you? Why would you shield me from this? Glory? Um, I'll give you. I'll give you one more, just as a little taste. To defeat a powerful enemy, one must have threesomes. I I will do what I must. <laughs> This has been Star Wars every week forever. <laughs> let off on me saying all of this. Good night. Uh, Jesus Christ. The video was a mistake. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like in the best possible way. Hello all you beautiful people and thank you very much for joining us on yet another week of Star Wars every week forever. We upload every Wednesday around noon on various platforms, including YouTube, Spotify, TuneIn, and many others. If you have any friends, companions, people you would like to torture with our presence, feel free to send them our way. You know where to find us. If you would like to interact with the show and the various uh, co-hosts, being me, Josh, and Chris, you can find us quite easily on Twitter, at S-W-E-W-F. We check there very regularly, so it's easy to get a hold of us. And I hope all of you wonderful people have a glorious rest of your day. Until next we meet, may the Force be with you.